okay what you know like I showed you other what you do is you take your caliper turn it on set it to zero and you rest it on a ledge and you bring it all the way down till it touches okay then what I do is I back off I'm coming up with 307 .307 so I'll back off to I don't know about um, well, I've already got I did three of them already before I got to this so let's just measure okay I got right a hair under three inches so why don't we call this uh, 2.995 2.995 and just to verify what I typically do is turn the head around slide it through and just look and see where it's at in the scheme of things like I said I am going to hit a little bit of drive and knock it a little bit below that and I got to have that tube inside so that when I torque it, it don't put pressure on the tube and it don't hit the deck surface. So just a few thousandths back. That's our number. Now, what I do is I take the tube and I put this on the top and then use this bottom as a scratcher and you just can't go wrong. It leaves a little bitty indention, a little bitty mark right there. Then I take my tubing cutter and put the tubing in there okay and then line the little tubing cutter up with it and there you go I'm gonna try to get you a little bit better close-up shot so you can see that hold on you can see right there where it didn't get it all the way but I got a little bit of a scratch using the caliper I rested on the top and just made a little bitty scratch so that it showed me where I began cutting it and I've got that uh, tubing cutter right there dead center on the slot I'm going to turn it around and break it off and uh, I'm going to have to have uh, two for each head I've got four heads because remember this is the Denmark duo and I've got to cut a total of uh, two, four, six, eight, sixteen of these all together. I think that's right. One, two, three, four, five, no, eight, excuse me, eight of these. That covers both heads. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the tube cut and then we're going to set up to remove the material in the guide and I got a two-step process on doing that, okay? Here we go. thing I thought I'd show you these tubes come with a light epoxy coating on it now when I'm sizing it I strip this coating off of it so that it gives me a little bit of buildup because I want a little bit of a press fit this is kind of like a protection thing or if I'm running the sand roll in there and I get it just a touch loose if I do it without the epoxy coating I know that when I put the tube in that's got the epoxy coating it's going to have a little bit more build up make her a little bit tighter fit but this is how I do it said you can see the shiny part the edge is beveled so it's rounded it'll go down just so far 
One thing I'd like to note that was unusual with this set of Pro Comp heads is that about the first, I don't know, 300 or 400 thousandths, look how I can slide the tube in. It was bigger, wallered out at the very tippy top. It was like that on all four heads. And the only thing I can figure why Pro Comp did that is some of the ARP head bolts have a big, thick radius on the top, um, which still, even, you know, the stock hole size, which is 7 sixteenths, it shouldn't have had a problem. So it, it, it makes me tend to think, hey, it was either a, uh, an incorrect machining, pr machining procedure when it was going down the assembly line and they had a different cutter in them and it went so far then they finished it or it was actually wallered out some which is incredible that um, they would release it but you know it ain't just like I said don't point the finger at Pro Comp for their shoddy stuff because I promise you it ain't just them uh, I've seen this kind of sh stuff like this with the Brodex and the Dart uh, get a brand new set of heads and you can sit there and point out little machining inconsistencies because remember it is a production line like the valve job and like the guides being home correct to size uh, basically they're once again I'll fall back I know y'all have heard it a thousand times okay they're giving you a good core you're not supposed to take the heads assemble like they try to sell them with that horse shit that they're putting in the heads the junk which a lot of times is the china valves they'll offer a valve upgrade option whoopee because the valve isn't sized correctly to the guide you've got taper in the guide then the valve job's going to be crap the best way and the only way in my eyes is to buy the heads bare order your parts the good stuff you want and then have a competent machinist go in there rehome the guides do the valve job and give you something correct like it's supposed to be but anyway i just thought i'd show you that that is not from my uh, reamer the reamer actually dropped down and caught right where you're seeing that okay so anyway let's go ahead let me show you how i do it i'll go ahead and um I take and trim me a couple of sand rolls, usually my used ones, the rough grit, and get it where it will fit down in the hole. Make a couple of passes. You gotta be real careful. You don't wanna go crazy, cause remember, see look at there, she's starting to go down, and I do want a press fit. So, you get a couple of passes there, once again. Then you turn the head around to the other side and you hit it from this side, which in this case is going to be over here. Let me get that set up. Now on the bottom side, see I can't, I can barely, look at that, it's starting to go in, but it's just not a little bit. That's almost the press fit. So I'm going to take this right here and just make a... Boom, that ought to be it right there because I do want press. Wait a minute, wrong end. This is the shiny side again. It's got the epoxy up. Look at there, there we go. Now it's barely going in when I put pressure on it. That's it. Now the epoxy coating side, look, it ain't gonna go down hardly at all. Just that little bit of thickness. Now imagine when I go in there and I put the epoxy on it, it actually has to be hammered and driven in. And then at that point, there is no way it's coming out. The epoxy adheres to it mainly for vacuum leaks. Now, uh, and with the epoxy coating on it, it's so hard to drive in. But uh, as you see, that's the shiny side. So right there, we got our fit. Now that's on the intake side on any side that has heat on it. Like if I'm tubing the exhaust side, which are several applications, big block Ford, big block Chevy, where I put the tubes in, it can't, it's got to have a harder press fit where I, can, I can't even stick it in because it has to be driven in with the epoxy because the heat and everything in there, uh, you know, it'll tend to break away the epoxy with a thousand degrees of heat. Uh, it won't break it off in no chunks, 
but you have got to have over a thousandth to two thousandths more crush than what this is going to have on the exhaust side. So anyway, you see how I got the fit. Now, when I go in there to grind the infamous pillar of power and I take that out, I know that my tube is going to slide through top to bottom. It's going to be accurate and there won't be no deflection. If you go in there and grind and break away into the center bolt holes and you have not size custom fit this tube to there, what will happen is it will go in at an angle and then when you're trying to drive it, it will catch the material on the side and uh, you just can't believe how severe the damage could be, especially if you're taking a hammer and you're whacking it, it can actually take a chunk of the port out. Uh, years and years and years ago when I first started tubing them and getting into that I just about damaged these heads every way you can imagine till I finally figured out a method and I'm sharing this with y'all years of doing this just take my word for it size it where you got the action that you see me get now I'm ready to go in there and grind the guides are leveled they're chopped off I got the tubes where they're fit I've already mapped the cylinder head I've sonic I've seen seated all the data is ready now I'm ready to go in there because I have a piece of paper that's got a print I'm gonna be able to go in there now and just start cutting right